Sometimes life can be tough. Maybe it's been a tough year for you, especially with the COVID pandemic. Maybe you have memories of someone dear to you that you have lost. Or you have struggled mentally with the lockdowns and social isolation. Or perhaps you have suffered financially with redundancy or loss of business. Perhaps there's a year you'll be glad to put behind you. There may be other ways in which you are suffering right now too. Maybe in ill health or with stress or broken relationships or something else. Suffering can often make us feel alone. We feel that no one really understands. And then there is God. What does he know? How far away he often seems. But is he so remote from suffering after all? Yesterday we thought of that remarkable expression, the word was made flesh. Jesus was God becoming a human being and living among us. He was Emmanuel, God with us, living in this world. Was Jesus a stranger to suffering? Was he wrapped up in cotton wool and insulated from the real world? Far from it. He knew suffering throughout his life, right from the very beginning. We might make our nativity scenes look very cosy, but that is seeing it through our rose-tinted spectacles. If today there was no room in the hospital and a mother had to have her baby in the car park, we wouldn't think of that as terribly cosy, would we? It was a rough start for Jesus, and it didn't get any better. It wasn't long before he was the target of King Herod's murderous intent, and he had to flee to Egypt as a refugee. We don't read much about his early years, but during his public life, his workload was exhausting and unrelenting. On his travels, he often had nowhere to stay. And once he was so tired, he slept in a boat through a storm so terrible that it threatened to sink it. He was frequently verbally attacked by the religious elite, and his life was often in danger. He knew what it was to be let down by others, be betrayed by a friend, and abandoned in his hour of need. See him a lonely figure before the religious leaders when they put him on trial. The faces in the hall full of hatred and desperate for his blood. He was slapped and spat on. He was flogged and crowned with a crown of thorns. He was stripped naked and nailed to a cross in public shame and extreme agony, while the crowds just mocked and the soldiers heartlessly gambled for his clothes, his last possessions. Although he is now risen and ascended to heaven, he knows how rough life can be. He is not remote and indifferent to our sufferings. He understands what it is like. He can empathise with us. But we need more than sympathy. We need help. As man, he understands. As God, he has the power to help. His sufferings were firstly to save all who believe in him from sin and death. But he is also the one that believing people can come to in their sufferings and find help and strength. However deep the pit we may be in, we are never alone. This is what the Bible says. For this reason, he had to be made like his brothers in every way, in order that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in service to God, and that he might make atonement for the sins of the people. Because he himself has suffered when he was tested, he is able to help those who are being tested. When we come to him, we find him to be a true friend in time of trouble.